Yo, I bought the LG B7. Let's talk about it. Part 4. Hey, I'm Joey, and this is the LG B7A 65 inch OLED TV. Today I'm going to share with you my settings for each picture mode that I found to work best for most types of content so far. And these settings should apply to most 2017 LG OLED TVs as well. Let's talk about it. Alright, let's talk about the settings on LG OLED TVs. Hey, I'm Joey. Behind me is the LG B7A 65 inch OLED TV. A few of you guys have picked this TV up recently. Um, so the settings I'm going to cover with you today apply to the C7, E7, B7, G7, all of the 2017 OLED TVs. So a common question I get is how do you achieve the brightest possible image? And so I'm going to share with you my settings and they're probably going to surprise you a little bit because I'm going to show you a mode or a picture mode that I typically stay away from on other TVs but for LG OLEDs um, it seems to do the trick, at least for achieving uh, maximum brightness. So behind me is a movie called The Hateful Eight and there's a lot of snow in this movie. Uh, you can navigate to it on Netflix. Um, so if you want to follow along or uh, test these settings on your TV. So again, this is called the Hateful Eight, and we're going to run through my settings on the LG B7A OLED. Again, it should, uh, it should apply to all LG OLEDs um, in 2017. Here are my settings. But Vivid seems to give me a little more brightness um, apart from the other modes, unless you're in Dolby Vision mode. And that's a separate video. We'll cover Dolby Vision settings separately. Number one, you want to make sure your picture mode settings are set to vivid. The aspect ratio settings, I have them set to original. The energy saving off, eye comfort mode off, unless it's at night. Um, and I still don't really use it. I have actually a separate mode that I use for nighttime viewing. It's called expert dark mode. Picture task doesn't matter. OLED panel settings. Make sure you have screen shift on. So click on vivid, the second layer of menu items uh, behind the vivid picture mode. OLED light set to 100, contrast set to 100, brightness set to 50, sharpness 30, but that's subjective. You can set it anywhere between zero. I would not go beyond 30 unless you're watching sports. Uh, color set to 50, tint is zero, and now color temperature I have set to W6 because that is what makes snow look more natural, a natural white point. Now when I calibrated the TV, the white actually looked too warm for me, so W6 in vivid mode looks, looks good to my eye. Now let's go into picture options. Uh, noise reduction, I have it set to auto. Uh, MPEG noise reduction I have set to auto. I haven't really seen a lot of difference uh, in changing these outside of auto, so I really, I never deviate from that. Black level and real cinema is grayed out. Motion eye care turn off, and I, I have my true motion set to clear. When you set true motion to clear, it by default turns real cinema on. So I like it set to clear. This gives it, well, a more clear picture. Um, if you don't like it, We'll talk about it. I don't want to get into motion settings in this video. Um, this video is really more or less trying to get the contrast, get that pop, um, and get the uh, color right. But fortunately, the OLEDs, the color is really accurate out of the box, and that's pretty awesome. Pixel refresher, some of you have brought this up. This takes a long time, so plan on being away from your TV for a few hours if you decide to do this. When you hit the start button, it goes into kind of a screen cleaning mode. I never do this because I don't watch risky TV shows or movies where I have static images on screen all the time. So I have yet to even have to use this, but I believe it does it automatically um, if you let the TV kind of go into a restful state for a few hours. So that's what, kind of what Pixel Refresher does. That's the screen cleaning that it does on its own, but you can manually put it into that mode if you want, and that's that's what that is. I, I don't think I'll ever use Pixel Refresher, to be honest. If you turn the brightness up, it actually washes out the black levels, so I never recommend, it doesn't matter what mode you're in, I would leave it at 50. Your OLED light and contrast, if you want a, a darker image or Excuse me, if you want to reduce the brightness or the luminosity of the, of the TV, these are the two 
settings you want to play with. And happy to show you real quickly, if I move this all the way to zero, go back, and then take the contrast all the way down, that's what dims the TV. I typically leave those at 100 during the day, and I'll lower them to about 80 at night. Expert Bright, a the common theme here, you're gonna see my settings are pretty similar across the board. Um, now if you click into uh, the picture mode settings for Expert Bright Room, uh, again, you'll see my OLED light and contrast are set to 100, brightness is at 50, these settings are going to be very similar all the way across. Now you see we have a, a, a one extra menu item that's available to us in the expert bright mode and that's called expert controls. Pay attention here because you can really mess up your image if you get these settings wrong. So in the expert bright mode, I use dynamic contrast. I have it set to medium. Uh, super resolution, I have it set to medium. I've changed these settings and, and I've like really pixel peeped and studied the image. I can't tell any difference. Uh, color gamut, set it to auto and some of you have had questions about this. It, I either set it to wide or auto. Extended looks terrible. Auto does not mean it will pick one or the other. Auto is something completely different. I'm still investigating to see what it's doing but when you set it to auto, do not assume that it's picking extended or wide based on the content because that, that is not what's happening. I'm seeing color differences between all three of these. So I usually set it to auto or wide. Up to you. But anytime you're in HDR mode, it's going to be on wide, just so you know. So that's color gamut. Uh, edge enhancer, I leave it to on. Again, I can't really tell much difference with this on or off. I don't know. I'll leave it on. Color filter, I leave this off. This is really if you want to tweak your colors for skin tones, etc. I don't mess with it. Gamma, this is a big one. I leave it at 2.2. 1.9 essentially reduces contrast, essentially. It brightens the overall image, but your black levels get a little bit more crushed. So 2.2 is where I always leave it. In fact, you can see right here, pay attention to this, um, this back button when I change between the options. BT1886 made the gray a little darker. 2.4 looks kind of the same. 2.2 brought the gray up a little bit. You can see now it's a little more prominent. And then 1.9, you're basically lifting the black levels is all you're doing. 2.2 is what I recommend. But again, the lower the number, your black's gonna look more gray. White balance, ooh, this is a critical one. For expert bright, I set it to medium. I do not like cool, it makes whites look more blue. See the snow in the background? Pay attention to the snow. It's making it look more orangish yellow. It's, it's adding warmth. It's, uh, it's adding like an orange overtone or a tone to it. Again, I leave it to medium. Medium does tend to lean a little blue, so if you don't like it, go to warm one. Um, they both look good. Uh, I think I get a little more brightness out of medium, just a tad. So medium is what I use. If it hurts your eyes, use warm one. These are the only two settings that I recommend using. Don't change method, pattern, point, red, green, blue. Do not, do not play with those settings unless you have the ability to professionally calibrate your TV. The color is pretty accurate out of the box. There's no need to mess with those. And I have calibrated my TV probably 10 times and at the end of the calibration I still end up fiddling with the settings to, to get it to my liking. So that is white balance. Do not go into color management system. You have, again this is for professional calibrators. Noise reduction I leave to auto. Again MPEG noise reduction to auto. It doesn't matter what setting you're in I always leave these to auto. Never change it. Um, you cannot change these. If true motion is set to clear and it this looks the best to me. User is if you want to adjust the de judder and de blur yourself. Uh, I just set it to clear for every single setting and I'm good. But again, when you set it to clear, it, it by default enables real cinema. Technicolor, based on what I'm seeing, this is the exact same thing as the expert modes. This looks pretty much identical to expert bright or expert dark. I can't tell any difference. Again, OLED light 100, contrast 100, brightness 50. These settings are the same. For this, my color's at 52. For some reason, it looked a little desaturated. 
Technicolor is known to be more accurate, which looks a little less vivid um, to my eye. Going to expert controls, I have dynamic contrast set to high for this mode and super resolution off, color gamut to auto, edge enhancer on. I think I was just playing with that to see if it did anything. That doesn't matter. Color filter off, again gamma, I always have it to 2.2. Unless I'm watching sports and the black levels look weird, I might play with it for sports, but for the most part it's at 2.2 which is basically medium, I think, for a lot of TVs. White balance. Um, for Technicolor, because Technicolor tends to be a movie mode, medium or warm one, I think I was playing with it earlier, I like medium myself, but if, you're, um, if you like your TV a little warmer, again, warm one's what you want. Mess with method, pattern, point, don't mess with these settings. Color management system, do not mess with that. And that is everything for Technicolor. My HDR effect user mode, I have it set to strong. So aspect ratio set to original, energy saving off. I forgot to tell you guys, make sure that is off. That will dim your image in a hurry. That drives me nuts. Now it's fine if you're watching at night, but during the day it drives me crazy. So keep that off. Eye comfort mode off. For this screen, alright, OLED light, 100, contrast 100, brightness 50, sharpness 20, color 55, again because um, this is HDR mode, so when I go into this mode I want my colors a little more vivid. Tint 0, color temperature is 0, this is a strange, this is a little bit different, this has a slider. So the way color temperature works is, if you drag this to the left, it's going to get a lot warmer. So pay attention to the snow here on the screen. If I go right, it gets really blue. If I go left, it gets more orange, really. Right there, right in the middle. I like it at zero, so that's for color temperature. Um, advanced controls. Dynamic contrast is turned off. I have dynamic color set to off. Color gamut set to wide. Again, it's HDR mode, I'm trying to simulate HDR. Super resolution off. Don't think that does anything, again, yeah, noise reduction auto, MPEG, noise reduction auto, that's grayed out. This is grayed out because I have true motion set to clear. If I, if I turn this off and then go back, now you'll see it's, you can turn this on and off. But again, I like it at clear, looks better to my eyes, you may not like it. HDR effect, picture mode, now this is probably what you came for, game mode. Um, game mode is a tricky one because some of the settings are not available, they're grayed out. So this is the best settings I've been able to find for my liking. I'm someone who likes a bright picture but I do not like my black levels crushed. So I want it bright and dark. Ah, who'd have thought? So game mode, aspect ratio original, energy saving off, eye comfort mode off, make sure screen shift is on for game mode for sure. All right, let's go into the actual, the deeper settings for game mode. OLED light I set to 80, here's why. The reason I keep it at 80 is because the higher setting, so the closer you are to 100, remember, you're gaming. So if you have a static image on screen while you're gaming and your OLED light is set to max, you're more susceptible to burn in. So I keep it at 80 if there are heads up displays or HUDs on screen. If there are no HUDs or heads up displays, I put it at 100 like all my other modes. Contrast set to 100 because I like my image brighter. Brightness set to 50. I don't move it off of 50 because I want to maintain my good black levels. I don't want gray blacks. Sharpness set to 20. Um, that's subjective, but this is game mode. So in games, I think you would want a little bit of a sharper image. Color, this is 60 because it's game mode. I like my game to look a little, have a little more color. I think the most natural setting is 50. So if you want your colors to be as natural as possible, set it to 50. If you want a little more pop, 60 to 65 maximum. Um, tint, zero. Color temperature as we just looked at a minute ago. Remember, if you go left, it makes it more orange or warm. If you go right, it makes it more blue. So I leave it, um, at zero. It's very hard to get it to zero. There you go. 
right in the middle. Advanced controls. For game mode, I like my dynamic contrast set to high. I'll show you what this does. See when I set it to off? Actually, look at the whites anywhere. Look at his shirt when I set it to high. Off, high. Off, high. What this does, uh, medium makes the overall scene brighter. If you set it to high, it pushes some of the shadows a little darker. It just adds more contrast. So high essentially is pushing some of the shadows darker and pushing the, the highlights a little brighter. Um, medium, I think, is just more SDR looking, and I think high looks more like HDR, in my opinion. So for gaming, I like it on high, it gives it more pop. But if, you, if you're losing shadow detail, you do not want to be on high. High definitely causes you to lose some shadow detail, and, and medium brings it back. So, but high looks better to me. So again, medium, if you want to bring back some shadow detail, high is if you want more contrast and more punchy look. Again, super resolution off. And gamma. Low looks more like old school SDR. High and high 2 crushes your black levels. I do not like either of these settings for most content. It looks weird to me. Medium is probably my favorite setting. Medium or low? For this movie, I like low. So gamma, gamma is one you'll probably play with a lot. But again, low or medium, I, I don't particularly like high 1 or high 2 myself. Alright, that is it for game mode. Sports. This is a big one. I, it took me a long time to get the sports settings right. So for sports, aspect ratio original, energy saving off, eye comfort mode off, and the OLED panel settings. Screen shift should be on for every picture mode. OLED light I had set to 100. Contrast to 100, brightness 50. Notice my sharpness is a little higher for sports. I have it set to 30. Colors at 55, I want a little more color, but I don't want skin tones to look orange or, you know, oversaturated. Tint zero, color temperature, and I'll show it to you again. I keep it right in the middle. All right, um, advanced controls, dynamic contrast, I like it set to high for sports. Now watch when I go to off. Uh, high to me looks better for sports. I've tested it. I like dynamic colors set to high for sports. I don't like that on for anything else. For sports or gaming, I like it on. I like it set to high. Or um, animations. Super resolution, I have it set to high because I was just playing around. I still don't think it does anything. I've yet to see it do anything. Gamma, I prefer this. I, I like my gamma low for sports because I don't want any shadow detail being crushed. Pay attention to the little circle, the back button on the bottom, like down here. This is how you can really see what these are doing. So I like it set to low for sports mode. Noise reduction, impact noise reduction, I always set to auto. Motion eye care, off. True motion, I like it set to clear. That is it for sports settings. Cinema user, okay. So this is cinema mode. I When I use this mode, it's usually in the evening or at night. Aspect original, energy saving always off, energy comfort off, OLED light 100, contrast 100, 50, 100. Starting to see a pattern here. Sharpness 10, color 50, tint 0, expert controls, dynamic contrast high, super resolution high, color gamut auto because I watch SDR and HDR content. Age enhancer on, again, I don't think that does anything, at least I can't tell. Color filter, do not turn that on. Gamma, 2.2. Remember we were talking about how gamma brightens the image? That's fine for sports, you don't want that for movies. You want 2.2 for movies, unless your TV is professionally calibrated and they're going to change it for you. 2.2 if it's not calibrated. White balance. I like warm one at night or in the evening. Um, it's a little easier on my eyes, but again, as I told you before, I jump between medium and warm one. If you like a cooler looking image, go to medium. If you like a warmer image, go to warm one. Don't play with any of these. None of these settings need to be changed. So don't change method, pattern, point, red, green. Yeah, don't change any of those. Okay. Do not change color management system and white balance. Yeah, I'm leaving it at warm one for cinema. Okay. 
You want to get notified when there's a price drop, firmware update, or anything related to TVs? Subscribe, hit the bell icon so you actually get the notifications, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm Joey. Thanks for watching. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the comments. Leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. Oh, and if you uh, didn't know, we're just a bunch of gearheads around here. If you want to join the family, hit that subscribe button. Jump into the comments, because it's a lively conversation around here. Let me tell you.